Today I'm going to show you how to make three different types of multiple strand necklaces. Three different methods I'm going to show you. Now I promised in the beginning when I made this channel that I would do some stringing tutorials and I have when I open the bargain bead box and when I was doing the curated bead box I did some stringing tutorials. However, I'm kind of limited to the beads that are in the box and the findings and such when I do those. So I decided to go ahead and do a couple with my own things and whatever struck my fancy at the time. And multiple strand necklaces are really popular. They sell really well if you're selling your jewelry. And so I have made this long type of necklace <clears throat> using bead cones. And it's one method that I've turned, I've gone ahead and made the strands and then turned it into a long necklace by stringing the ends here. And I show you in detail how to do that. And I just used rondelles, little two by three rondelles or three by two, whichever, and four millimeter round pearls, and then four millimeter round pearls on top here with a couple bead cones. And then I made a gemstone necklace. This one is freshwater pearl and citrine. And I've done this by starting with one strand type end and then making a middle. And I'll show you how to do that too. I twisted this one a little and when it lays on the neck, it lays really pretty. It just, it, it's perfect. And this is more of a collar length. I made this only 18 inches. So this part lays really pretty right at your throat. This one lays in the middle of the chest. And then I went ahead and made a triple strand that stays spaced apart. So sometimes you want to make a um, multiple strand necklace that actually stays spaced, that isn't twisted or turned, and looks really pretty. When you put it on your neck, it stays separated. The strands all lay separately. And so I showed you the method to do that. And this is also a gemstone necklace. It's um, pink and blue quartz more than likely dyed, but they're really pretty stones. So I went ahead and made a really nice triple strand necklace with that kind of doing color blocking. When I laid it out on my beadboard, I show you how to lay out a design and make it a triple strand like this and just kind of color blocked it. So that is the third necklace. And, um, I will probably be doing a few more stringing tutorials because I get a lot of requests for them. So these are the three things we're going to make today and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm not going to give you an exact material list. I show you at the beginning of each project what I'm going to use, but the um, the possibility of you actually having the exact same beads I have to do this is probably not very strong. So you can use whatever you have in your stash. This is a techniques video more than it is a tutorial showing you exactly what to do with stringing. You do not have to have an exact pattern. All you need to know is the basic techniques and then just go for it with your stuff and the way you want to make it. You do not have to follow it exactly. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am going to design a um, triple strand that turns into one strand. So it's one strand into three into one. And um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some 19 Beetleon. And this is a finer wire. It's not quite as fine as say seven and it's not quite as thick as say 49. It's somewhere in the middle between that, but it's still on the finer side when you're going to do multiple strands and you're going to um, use your wires all together at once in a crimp bead, then you want to have a pretty fine wire. So I'm using 19 Beetleon. You can see here it says use one or two crimp bead with it. Um, because I'm using three strands together, you could use a number three crimp bead 
or a number four crimp bead, but I think I'm going to, let me show you four. So four is really big, three is a little smaller than four, of course, and then two, even smaller, and one very small. So you could get a package of these with one through four so that you always have different size crimp beads on hand that will accommodate different ways of making different necklaces. So you could use a four, a three, or a two with this. I'm going to try it with a two just because that's the most common and that's what most people have on hand. And I'm going to see if all three of these 19 um, strand beading wire will fit through it. So I've got out some citrine rondelles and um, some freshwater pearls. I'm just going to make a gemstone necklace. I've got a couple of barrel beads that are citrine. I may, I may not use them. I'm designing this at the moment. I've got some bugle beads that are metal that are kind of a snake skin pattern and some um, and a clasp that's kind of the same pattern. A few different metal beads and some three millimeter metal beads. I may even throw in the mix in the mix some seed beads. I'm not sure yet, but this is how we're going to start this. I have cut 22 inches long three strands of the 19 beading wire, 19 strand beading wire. So then I've put all my three strands together and I am going to slide a size two crimp bead on it and then I'm going to slide one end, of, one end of my clasp on and give myself some room with my wire here put them together very tightly and flush at the end here and see if I can pass them back through this size two so I'm going to push the size two up on my thumb and I'm going to get you closer just so that you guys can see this for sure I'm going to push this up on my thumb so that what happens is I have a little space up on the top to try to guide my wires through. Give myself plenty of room with the wire and I'm going to try to slide these three through. And let's do that again. Now this would be a lot easier if I used a bigger crimp bead, but I'm just seeing if this one will work because I'm curious. If I could keep them together, I know they'll slide through there. There we go. I got them all together, and I'm just sliding them through the crimp bead. Just like this. And then I'll pull the longer length of wire to decrease my loop up here. But sometimes you'll end up having to pull each one individually. So um, because you've got three, they tend to get kind of out of whack. So let's see what we have to do here. Got to find that one. There it is. See, I found it, pulled on it, and now it's pretty much in line with the rest of them, like this. And then I'm going to try to just kind of separate them, get them parallel to each other. But the fact that I have so many wires in here, I'm not really going to worry about that too much. I just want them to be laying nicely next to each other. And then I'm going to take my regular crimping tool, since this is a small crimp bead, if you're using a size 4, you might want to have a Mighty Crimper on hand, though this will probably work with a 4. I just always use my Mighty Crimper. Now when I crimp, I'm going to go into the second divot closest to the handle. There's a crinkly look on one side and a half moon on the other. I'm going to center my crimp bead on the crinkly end, and I'm going to squeeze it. And now... I have essentially folded my crimp bead in half like this. Now you can see it's really full of wire, so you're not going to get a perfect fold. And then I'm going to turn it sideways, go into the divot closest to the tip of my um, plier here and squeeze it again. Now that will fold the fold in half. So you're just kind of reducing it and squeezing it together. And that's what you should have. And I put 22 inches of wire on here so that I could make sure that I had plenty of wire to do that with. So if you want a really long necklace, you're going to have to put more um, length. I'm shooting for about an 18 inch, so I've got plenty of room to work with. What I'm going to do now is just cut these down, and I'm going to use a bigger 
um, opening type of bead at the end here just so I can slide all those wires in the end. So I've got these four millimeter round, um, they're like 6O seed beads, so you could use a 6O seed bead if you'd like. It's got a nice big opening. You could use a bead cap and then slide a bead up there, whatever you would like. It doesn't truly matter. I'm going to now put all my wires together and on this end I am going to cut them flush just so as I bead my wires on or as I um, slide my beads on, sorry I'm trying to get this straight, they'll be pretty flush. I'm not going to get them perfect but this is pretty small wire so I can cut it with my scissors and dull them even more. And then I'm going to slide this bead on and bring this four millimeter round bead up over those little beading wire ends like this. Now you want to make sure that they don't stick out at all and um, poke the person that's wearing this. So I may even trim these down just a little bit more just so that they don't poke anybody and then slide my bead back up over it. Now I have a nice end to begin my beading with. So what I will do is I will just keep all three of my wires together <clears throat> and bead a certain amount until I get to the center and then I'll separate them and make um, three separate um, strands in the middle. So what I think I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pop on one of these bugle beads here. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? I'm going to make sure you get all three wires in there. And it's really not this hard, I promise you. There we go. And slide that down. And now I can just get some of my beads. Now freshwater pearls are really small. Their holes are really small. So I'm not going to be able to use them where I have my um, three wires together. They barely slide on one. So I am going to open my rondelles, my citrine here. And I'm going to use some of them and divide them with some metal beads, bugle beads, whatever, just so that I don't use up all of them because I want them to be my centerpiece more than anything else. So I'm going to put on like three of my citrine beads here. And, you know, keeping your wires together can be a kind of a pain in the butt, but it can be done. And just make sure they all straighten out. You see one of mine wrinkled up a little bit. And then I am going to grab <clears throat> maybe another one of my bugles. may have to get some more of these out. You can use any beads you want up here. It doesn't matter. As long as it will slide over all three of the wires, you can use anything you've got. The chances of you finding exactly what I'm using are slim. So um, just get something similar or get something completely different. It doesn't matter. It's the technique that's important here. It is not the beads. So use what you have on hand. These are just stringing ideas because I get a lot of requests for stringing videos. So that's what I have so far. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more until I get to the point where I'm going to split my wires apart and um, I will come back and show you what I've got. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I'm measuring this now that I have started mine um, with a clasp already and I didn't lay out a design. I am starting one end and then I will work my way to the metal and make sure that I do the other end exactly the same. If I'm going to aim for, oh, I probably want mine to be about 18 and a half inches. So I'm going to lay it right at the mark for nine and a half inches on this side. 
and I've got my toggle clasp the round side so I'm putting that mark right in the middle now I like to start if I'm going to divide things I like to start right around the five five and a half inch mark so if you're making yours longer you can go ahead and lay it and see, say you want to make a 22 inch necklace so you're gonna lay your toggle here go ahead and still make the same length so you're still going to go to five five and a half inches because that's around collarbone area and then start your opening and your multiple strand area so um, with mine I'm going to lay mine right about here and then I'm going to make my multiple strand right between this five five and a half area here five and a half inches is probably better but because of the way my um, my beads are laying that's close enough so that's basically how you want to measure it and then we'll start opening it up and when we get to the five five and a half area same area on this side then we'll close it back down and do our stranding now you can see I have enough wire here several inches left over so that I can actually after I put my beads on it's going to spread it out and take some up also I'll still have enough to go through my um, my crib bead so you want to make sure that you start with a good length of wire a couple inches on either side to work with so I'm making mine about 18 and a half inches so I made mine 22 inches long each strand I probably could have even gone a little longer but that's how you're going to measure so that you can get the length you want now we are going to begin opening this up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these strands now whether you want them to twist or you want them to be parallel um, or just lay on top of each other it kind of is how you have them twisted in your necklace itself which with this type of necklace you don't have a heck of a lot of control over if I can get these to separate it would be grand there we go so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of my small beads now you can also use like an 11-0 um, 15-0 if you want an 8-0 seed bead on this part if you'd like I have these little three millimeter beads so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use just so they lay a little bit differently on each side one of my strands I'm going to use two of these little guys if I can pick it up and then on the next one I think I'll use one so I want to go to my middle strand straighten it all out make sure I've got my middle strand I'll use one just so it kind of um, spreads my beads out a little bit when I put them on here then on my third one I'll put three so it'll give a little bit or two excuse me um, it'll give a little bit of room for my rondelles when I put them on here and so I'm going to start with these are pretty big rondelles they're about six millimeter across or maybe even bigger it could be more like eight millimeter across I'll measure them and let you know but I'm going to go ahead and start with my first one that I put two on and put a rondelle on there and see how we do so that looks okay let's grab the next one on the one strand here or the one bead on the middle strand and put a rondelle on and then on the next one I will put a rondelle where I have my three and see if this is going to give enough room to kind of spread these beads out yeah it looks like it's going to be okay they're going to lay together all right see what I'm doing is I'm making room to accommodate the width of the beads is what I'm doing now you may need three you may it just depends on the size of your beads so I have got this pretty well laid out the way I want it and I can use whatever I'd like I can use some of my little silver beads I can go ahead and I think I'll put on a silver bead and a pearl 
and I'm in my middle strand here and I'll probably do all three of my strands about the same time so that I can make sure that the beads are going to lay together nice. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up another little bead and a pearl and you don't have to make them all the same. You can make them different. You can make it random. You could use a bead soup. It doesn't matter. Really, I just try to make it to where the beads will lay pretty nice together. Kind of make a small bead where a big bead is and a big bead where a small bead is. It doesn't have to be perfect and it won't be perfect, but I just kind of try to allow room for the beads. I think this middle one, I'm just going to go ahead and make... Eh, should I make it with pearls? Yeah. I was going to make it all rondelles. You can make one all one thing, another one all another thing. At like a, This could be all silver beads. This could be all pearls. This could be all rondelles. It's just up to you how you want to do it. It doesn't matter. Now I'm just going to go directly with a... I don't know if I need a spacer or not. Let me see. Go directly with the rondelle. Yeah, I think that'll work. And see, so yeah, that's working. So once I pull these tight, I want to make sure they're going to lay together. Yep. That looks pretty good. So I'm just going to continue stringing these. And then when I have all the way over to my five and a half inch mark, right, right about here on the um, opposite side of my reading board, over here, then um, right about here, then I will begin to close it back down into one strand. Okay, so you can see as I advance in my stringing, I am kind of randomly putting stuff on, but I'm making my random pattern the same on the two outside strands and different on the inside strand. So as I'm stringing it, I'll string this one, and then I'll put something on here, and then I'll string this one the same as I did this one, and just keep moving through doing it that way. So this one is different than these two. Okay, so now you can see I've laid my toggle back on the nine and a half point here and I've come right to the zero point with my stringing so what I'll do is I'll just reverse my stringing and do exactly what I did on this side in reverse over here now you don't have to you can just keep randomly stringing if you want but I want them to lay together pretty nicely so I am going to and I want them to end the same way on this side on this side as they are on this side. So I'm just going to reverse what I did. I'm going to look at each each strand and just start reversing and stringing until I get to about here. And then I will draw it all together. Okay, so I have made my complete length and I have ended with my two little beads on the outside, one on the inside, and two on the outside. And I've laid them out just like they are on the other sides over here, making sure that the strand with the one little bead at the end is in the middle and kind of on top of the other two strands. And then I will do what I did on the other side. I will pick up three of my rondelles and slide them down. Just making sure that everything is staying in the order that I put them in. And then I'll continue putting my rondelles on. And I'll do um, this side the same way that I did the other side. And this is just one technique of doing a multiple strand into one strand. And I'll show you a couple other techniques of doing multiple strands. Now I'm going to pull down that one and I'm going to try to make sure that all my tension 
is correct on this, that there's no slack because this has to be pulled pretty tight to keep everything in line. Otherwise, um, your middle isn't going to be nice and tight. You're going to have slack and nothing's going to hang correctly. So you, you want it to hang correctly. So we've got to make sure that one stays basically on top of the other two as we do this. And then I'm going to just continue stringing this end exactly the same way I did the other end. And I will be back and show you how to Okay, so it. I have finished this side. I finished it with my four millimeter round and then I dropped a um, crimp bead on here, or a crimp tube. And now I am going to drop down my clasp. And then I'm going to go back through the crimp tube and the four millimeter round bead right here and pull this through and make sure that you leave enough room for your toggle to move around make your loop about the same size as the other side so let me get you close so you can see what I'm doing I hope you can see me I just threaded that through the bead or the crimp bead and the four millimeter round and I'm just kind of comparing this loop size to this loop size, this one's a little bit bigger, and I'm keeping my tension tight. I don't want my beads to have a lot of movement on this or any slack because of the way I've strung it. I need to hold tension to hold them together correctly, so I'm not going to give any slack in my line. There's some beads you want to do that so that they can move a little bit and not break, but on this one, it's really not necessary, plus it won't work <laughs> if you do it otherwise. Now I'm going to crimp this by putting it in the second divot on my plier closest to the handle, and then you can see how it has crimped. It's folded in half. Now I'm going to go into the middle, or the end divot, and squeeze the middle together and that has crimped very nicely. So you use the back divot first and then the divot closest to the tip second. And then um, you can use your wire cutters, your flesh cutters, get really close to this bead as close as you can and cut off those extra strands and get all my weird stuff out of the way here. And I'll show you what I have made I beat Matt's a mess, so I'm trying not to show you my mess. And this is what this has turned out like. Now you can see how it just lays really pretty. And that has to do with the way that I laid out my beads, just like this. And let me show you the whole thing. Now you can turn it and twist it and do all kinds of stuff to make them lay different if you'd like. But this is what it turns out like. You can also untwist it and just have them lay really pretty next to each other too. However you want. But I think that turned out quite pretty. And that is one method to make a very pretty multi-strand necklace. And I will measure it, see exactly how long I made this. So you want to, you have to put it on the the outside one to get a true measurement. And this I did lose about a half an inch, so it's a good thing I moved this up a half an inch when I was measuring. So I have an 18 inch necklace exactly now. So that's how that works, and this is the end result. So let's find something else to make. Okay, so now let's say that we want to make a three-strand necklace that is spaced so that when it lays in on your neck, each strand lays separately. <clears throat> in order to do that, you need to lay a design out on your beadboard. And you need to make sure that you make it long enough so that the shortest strand that is in the middle is going to go around your neck well. So if I was to just lay this out to the 18 inch mark, my shortest strand would be around 
16, 17 inches. You lose quite a bit on the inner strand. Now this is a good inch apart here, maybe a little over an inch. So the space that you lose on your inner strand is the space is the length that you're going to end up with because it's closest to your neck. So what I'm trying to say is lay it out bigger than you want it to actually be. So your last strand here on mine is going to be 22 inches. My middle strand would be about a half inch shorter than that. And then my very middle strand will be an entire inch, maybe a little bit over an inch. Um, shorter than my longest strand. So I have laid it out to 22 inches because I want it to end up to be 18, 19 inches around my neck at least. If it's any shorter than that, it's going to be too tight and be uncomfortable for me. So that's what you need to keep in mind when you lay out your design. Now I've laid out a design with some quartz. These are dyed quartz pink and blue. They're really pretty gemstone beads. And um, some metal beads, some metal accents. And then I want it to stay spaced. So there's several ways I can make this stay spaced. The easiest way is to use a three strand clasp. So each one of my strands will connect on one of these little loops. And then, of course, the other side on this loop, and we'll take it apart and put it together like this. That works really well. You can also use a spacer bar. Now, if you use a spacer bar like this one, you will have to have some smaller beads. It's always on on these um, particular necklaces, you always want to make the back of your necklace quite a bit narrower so it will go into whatever you're connecting it into. Spacer bar like this one works at the very end. If you string your smallest beads into here and then you put some a small bead on the outside or two and then a larger bead that all three strands will go into and then maybe a couple smaller beads on top of that bead and then your clasp. So this is what it would look like. You would string this strand into this hole, this strand into this hole, this strand into this hole. Once you have the strand sticking out, then you would put maybe two more small three millimeter, millimeter or four millimeter or seed bead spacer beads here and then here and then here. Bring all three strands together bring them through one bead and then maybe another small bead or two and then put your crimp around, bring your strand around, put your crimp through. But you're going to have three strands that have to come through that. So that's a little bit more difficult. You have to bring the strands down into one and then crimp those three strands into your um, toggle here. So you want to use some pretty fine beading wire to do that. Or you can use a uh, toggle that has three loops. This, however, for me, I will not use this because if you look at the way this was designed, this does not work well unless it's so narrow that these little things, th this little side will draw up through this side then it could work, but <laughs> this design is very poor because when you have a bunch of beads coming up through and you have width coming up through the straight end of the toggle, it's very difficult to get it through the round end and actually make it work. Unless, like I said, it's very, very narrow strand that you're using. This, to me, is a very poor design. I ordered these a long time ago and have never used them because they don't work well. If it was spaced differently, if it was bigger, it, it could work. But this design here is very poor. So what I'm going to go ahead and use to keep my strands apart on this one is this particular clasp. So what I will do now, I've laid out my design. My design is not perfect on here. 
so you'll see that it's a little bit not quite even but that's because your beads fall to the side and you get a little bit of funny spacing so I may even take a couple more of these little three millimeter beads up towards the end to even it out as I'm stringing but I'll look at it and see what I need to do once I get it on there and measure each one and make sure that it hasn't shortened so much that it's changed the length by the time I get all the beads on and they're laying tighter together. I'm going to use some four millimeter spacer beads, some three millimeter at the very end spacer beads. I've got these little bugles and I thought that that would make a nice narrow end. Um, we'll see, sometimes they don't bend well, you know, because they're long and narrow, but I think that that could work very well. Otherwise, you can just put a bunch of four millimeter beads or seed beads, uh, 11 O's, 8 O's would work well. And then I'm just going down into my design. And I will go ahead and string the first one. I will connect it to my clasp. And then I'll string the second one and the third one. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and string my strands. And you can put a little piece of tape at the end of them if you want to do them all, all of them and then connect them. Or you can connect one and then string the next one and connect it however you want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do my first one and I'm going to use some size 2 crimp beads and I'm going to use a crimping tool. So let me go ahead and I have my 19 beetle on is what I'm going to use and on each one I will measure out my piece of um, beading wire bead stringing wire at least two inches longer on either side than each strand so that I can um, have some extra room to crimp with. So I will just measure it loosely around my board like this. And just lay it for my outer strand and then I will cut it, making sure I have a couple extra inches. And then I'll do the same for the next one and the one after that. And that way you can get a rough estimate of um, your wire. And you'll have a little extra, of course, and that's what you want. So go ahead and cut a piece of wire. Or I will go ahead and cut a piece of wire and string my outside piece. You do not have to have the exact beads I have, so I'm not including an exact list. All you need is the beads that you want to lay out, lay it out this way, and use the same technique. Okay, so I'm going to begin by putting my first piece of beading wire onto my clasp. You don't have to, like I said, you can string them all first. And then um, have little clips on the end of them like this. Or you can put a little tape on the end to hold them, whatever you want. But I'm going to go ahead and put mine on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to this most upper piece here. So this is the way my clasp is going to lay. If you open it, you will see this is the top. So if I want to begin, I have to put my longest strand here. So I'm going to pick up a crimp bead. This is a size 2 beetle on crimp bead. And then I'm going to put this through my first loop of my clasp. I'm leaving my clasp together because it's less confusing if you leave it together. Sometimes you can get it upside down and then when you put your other end on, you put them on wrong and then you have your clasp all messed up. So I am going to leave it together and I'm going to take my wire and run it through my crimp bead. Bring this back and just kind of eyeball how big I want my loop because you want a little bit of movement here but you don't want it to be really huge. Now I'm going to take my crimping tool and I'm going to use the second divot. It's a crinkly side over here and a half moon side over here. I'm going to place that on my crimp tube making sure that my wires are lying parallel to each other right next to each other and not crossed inside the bead, the crimp bead. And then I'm just going to squeeze. Now you can see I have encased my two wires. Let me get you even closer. You can see that my wires are encased. 
I can get this right here, separately. So there's a little tube around this wire and a little tube around this wire. And then I'm going to go into the second divot on my crimping tool and turn it sideways and squish these two pieces of the two tubes together like this. I know you can't see because of my class, but that's basically what you're doing. You're just squeezing it together. And you can see I have a nice crimp now. Now I can take this wire and cut it down. I leave a little so that it will go through my first couple beads, but you don't have to. You can cut it all the way down if you want, but I've just cut that extra tail off. And now I can begin stringing my first strand of beads. So my outside one here, the very outside, is where I will begin. So I can begin just picking them up and stringing them on. I have some three millimeter beads here to start with because I want it to be very narrow at the top here. So I'm going to see if this beading wire will fit down inside this extra wire I have. And it should fit just fine. So I will begin just stringing my design and I will be back when I get to the end so that we will then connect this to this opposite side. Here. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, I have strung my first strand, and I'm going to bring it around, drop a crimp bead on it, and then I am going to go ahead and connect it to the loop opposite the one that I've already connected to. So this is why I leave it together, just so that I know for sure that I am in the right spot, and then I'm just going to run my. <clears throat> beading wire back through the crimp bead and the first three little beads on here. And I'm just going to pull it together. You don't have to pull them really, really tight. This will have a little bit of slack in it. Make sure that you make a loop in this area up here the same size as the loop on this side so that you have some movement. So the loop that goes around the actual clasping, you want to make sure they're the same on both sides. So I have a, a loop about, eh, about the same size on either side. This one's a little bit bigger, so I'll make it a little smaller, scooch that back. And then I will grab my make sure that everything's together pretty good. Then I'll grab my crimping tool and I'll do the same thing I did before. Try to get them parallel next to each other and squeeze in the second divot, the one closest to the handle. And you can see that the wire either side is encased in its own little tube. And then I'm going to take those two little tubes I'm going to go sideways in the first divot on my crimping tool and squeeze. And now I have a nice crimp. You can always squeeze it again with the very end of the crimping tool where it's flat. You can squeeze it again just to ensure that it's nice and tight. If I can actually get my crimping tool around, I'll do this. Let's see. Yep, it's not moving. So then I'll just take my end cutters, get really close to the end of this, and cut it. Now, I have my first one done. And you can see that there was a tiny bit of slack in the line, and that's okay. That's going to allow these beads to move. These are quartz, and I don't want them to break. So let me show you what I was looking at. There's a tiny bit of slack. So where you come out of your beads, and you have your wire sticking out, it will always kind of create a little bit of space. And that's good, because you don't want your beads so tight on your string wire that they'll either break or the wire will break because there's no movement in them. So this is nice 
and perfect. Now, if I want to, I can go ahead and take this apart because I pretty much know where I'm going to be now. I need to connect to the next strand. And this way I can just kind of pull this aside and connect. And when I want to make sure that I have everything correct when I'm connecting the other end, I can put it back together and connect it too, just to make sure that I have everything okay. But I want to go ahead and start my second strand, so I'll disconnect this. And I will cut another piece of wire. So I'll measure it around my board here, just like I did the first one, and give myself plenty of extra um, wire. So I'm just cutting this off camera. I know you can't see me. So I've cut another piece of wire, and I will grab another crimp tube. I will connect it, just like I did the first one. Slide this on here my crimp tube on to my wire and spill my crimp tubes and flip the other one across the room. Yep, I'm in prime form tonight. All right, so let me grab this. Put this on. And then I will just run this through here and then bring it back through my crimp bead make my loop around my clasping about the same size as my previous one And I hold my wires parallel to each other so that they're not crossed inside the crimp tube because they will cross. They just do that. And then you don't get a very good crimp when they cross. So let me, there we go. I've got it to where they're laying pretty parallel. And then I'll grab my crimping tool and I will then Grab a hold of it in the second divot this is where your clasping gets in your way and crimp that on there whoa got that way too close there we go it's not crimped tight so I'm good I can do it again there we go and then I'll turn it sideways and crimp it this way. See if I got a good crimp. Didn't feel like, oh yeah, they're in their two separate little tubes. I didn't feel like I did it properly, but I did. And then I'll just crimp this one more time in the front, just squeeze it together with the front of my tool, just to make sure I have a good crimp. Make sure that nothing's moving and it's good and tight. And now I can just start stringing my second strand. So I'll go ahead and string my second strand and I will come back and we'll move on from there. Okay, so as you can see, <clears throat> I have strung my second strand and I am going to go ahead, I put my um, crimp bead on. I'm going to go ahead and connect it here. I put my clasp back together so I can see exactly where I need to be and what angle I need to be at and then I'll just go ahead and put it on there. Of course I can take the class apart if it's in my way. Whatever is easier for you. It's just to show you that I wanted to make sure I laid it out and had it at the position I wanted to put my necklace on, my neck strand on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Then I will go ahead and string my third one and connect it and I will come back and show you the end result. It's very repetitive at this point. It's exactly the same thing I've shown you. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then we will look at the end result. And here is my finished product. So I went ahead and put my last, strung my last one and went ahead and connected it. 
And this is what it looks like. And it looks really good on the neck. It hangs perfectly. It's a nice size. Works really well for me. And I really like it. So that is necklace number two. That is technique number one right there. And um, let's try another one. Okay, so I've decided to make a dainty little multi-strand. And this one, all of the strands are going to hang together. And I think I'm going to use these 2 by 3 crystal rondelles. They're kind of a variegated um, half silver gold mix of color. And then I'm going to use some 11 O seed beads. I've got these two cones. I, will, I know I have some prettier cones than this, but you think I can find them? No. So I'm going to use these cones and a toggle clasp, and I'm just going to show you how to put together a really simple multi-strand necklace. All the strands are going to hang together, so they're all going to be the same length. So I have cut a piece, about a 22-inch piece of... Um, the 19 strand beetle on. Again, I'm going to use a pretty fine um, beading wire. It's what I have out. And it also works really good with these little these little um, rondelles and gives some pretty good movement. It's nice and flexible, so they'll move nice for me. So I'm going to use that. And I'll cut several pieces the same length. I am not sure how many strands I'm going to make yet. Probably four, maybe five, um, maybe even three. I don't know. It just depends on what it looks like as I start to put this together. But I wanted to show you how I'm going to do this. I've got some size one crimp tubes. And I want to start this. I'm just going to make some loops. And I'm not going to put the loops around anything. I'm just going to crimp off the end in a loop and then start my weaving. So I'm going to pick up a size one crimp tube. Let's move some of this stuff so you can see what I'm doing. I've picked up a size one crimp tube. Then I'm just going to drop my crimp tube. Hey, yeah, that's great. Okay, pick up the size one crimp tube, then I'm going to go back through. I'm just making a loop like this. I don't want to make it huge, so I'm going to go back through it and just bring a little bit out of the edge here. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull the long strand so that I make a small loop at the top here. like this. Maybe even a little bit smaller. And I'm really not too concerned if it twisted inside the crimp bead or not because I'm not going to use a crimping tool for this size one. I am just going to grab my chain nose pliers or my flat nose pliers, either one, and I'm just going to squish this. I might even make that loop just a little smaller and just squish that down like that and you can just cut that and down because it's probably not going to slide into the beads just make sure it's that crimp bead is really firm on the wire and it isn't going anywhere and then just cut this down you don't have to cut it real far down you're not going to see this end anyway it's going to be in the bead cone and then we're going to pick up like three 11 O seed beads. Maybe um, let's pick up five 11 O seed beads. And drop them down. And then I'll just begin stringing my beads on here. I think I'm going to use a couple of four millimeter better colored pearls in the mix too. I have some of these out. So you can make it really dainty and just have just the two by threes on here, but I think I'm gonna break it up here and there with a pearl. So I'm just going to randomly string these on here. And 
and then I think I'll put a pearl here and there and I will be back and show you how to end the other end when we get done okay, stringing. Okay, so as you can see I've made my first strand. This is 18 inches long and I put on my five seed beads at the end. What I did was I counted out 14 of my rondelles then a pearl, 14 rondelles then a pearl just because that way on my next strand I can go like six and put it on a pearl and on the strand after that I can do like five or four and a pearl or whatever just so that I know that my pearls won't all be on top of each other I can move them around in the sequence of beads that I make of the rondelles so that I know that they'll be spread throughout my necklace evenly now I have gone ahead and put my five seed beads here and I have my size one crimp tube on the end here so this end is a little bit different because as you pull through, sometimes you'll want to pull your loop too tight and pull it to where it doesn't work quite right. So I'm just going to go through this crimp tube. You can go through one of the seed beads too if you'd like. And once I have that, I'm going to hold on to this outside part and pull until I get my loop. Now you can take the tip of your round nose pliers and put it inside that loop if you'd like. Let's get it small if you need to to make sure you have no slack in your line that way you can tighten up your beads. You don't want them so tight that they don't hang pretty either though. But that way as you're adjusting the tension you can hold, let me back off so you can see what I'm doing. You can hold your loop. And I'm just adjusting it because I don't want it so tight that they bunch up and look funny. I want them to lay nice on here. So I want them to have a little bit of slack in the line. And then as you do that, you can just make sure that your loop doesn't go away. Now I have my loop and I'm going to make sure it's about the same size as this one. It's a little bit bigger so I'll just pull it a little bit smaller and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my um, long nose pliers or, or whatever you want to call them, chain nose pliers and squeeze that crimp tube really tightly and then I'm just going to cut this off And now I have my first strand. Let me back off again. I hope I was in camera. So that's how you do that. You're just going to make a bunch of these now, as many as you want. I'm going to make, I, I don't know that I'm going to have enough beads to make more than maybe four strands. We'll see. And um, maybe a little bit more than that. I don't know. But I'll make four or five strands, something like that, and come back and show you how to put it all together. Okay, so I have made five strands, and they're all pretty close in size. They're not exactly the same, I mean in length. They're not exactly the same, which kind of helps keep them from laying right on top of each other in a glob. So they don't have to be exactly perfect. They can be a little bit shorter or longer than each other. That's fine. You just don't want to go inches shorter or longer. It's a little bit is fine. So what we're going to do now is there's a couple ways you can gather these up and put them inside the cone and then finish off this necklace. So you could take a head pin or make your own head pin by rolling a loop in your own piece of wire and then just open it like so and then just drop your strands onto it and then close it. So I'll just close this. I'm just going to show you because this is not the way I'm going to do it. But then you can um, drop, after you get all of your loops on there, you close the head, the eye pin, and then you just drop your cone bead over the top of that. And then you will just take your round nose pliers and wrap a loop like this. 
and then just wrap around the loop start wrapping your wire around and then once you finish that you can just attach some chain, attach a clasp to some chain, and then you're finished if you want to do it that way. I find that to be a little stiff on the ends and it doesn't hang quite as pretty. So with the way I like to finish this, let me get this cleaned up here and start over again with my little loop so I can show you. So what I like to do as I like to cut two pieces, I've cut them about 12 inches long each because I'm going to double them. Depends on how long you want the back of your necklace to be, which will determine how long these little strands will lay down on your chest. So I'm thinking mine need to be about four or five inches so that I get the length I want. So I cut 12 inches so that I can double it and have some room to clasp the end. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one of my 12 inch pieces and that's probably way more than I need but I'm just, I'm just making sure I have enough. And then I'm going to drop each strand onto the piece of wire. And then I will bring these strands to the center of my piece of wire. Bring my two ends together and let me back up just a little bit so you can see better. And then draw them up on my piece of wire just like this. Put the two ends together and then bring it through my cone bead. And draw the seed bead portion up into the cone like this. Now, if you'd like, you can get another accent bead or whatever you'd like. I think I'm just going to pop a four millimeter bead on here. You can use a larger bead. Um, I didn't really pick anything out. So just pop a bead on top of here like this. And then I will just start putting on some of my pearls because I'm all out of my rondelles. You could do a mix of rondelles and <clears throat> pearls, but I made so many of these strands with so many rondelles that I'm out. And I had like four very long strands of rondelles. So I just kept going till I was out. So now what I have to do is you could crimp this right here and cut one of the wires off. If your beads are very small and you cannot get both wires through, you can crimp this right here and then cut one of the wires off and then finish your necklace with just one wire. But I would much rather use them both if I don't have to do that because having an odd crimp there is, again, kind of awkward on the necklace. So I'm just going to start pushing some of my pearls down on both strands here. And I will just continue doing this until I get the length I want. And then I'll use a size 2 crimp bead and put on my clasp with both strands. So I'm going to continue doing this until I can measure it and get the length I want. And then I'll be back and I will show you how okay, to finish so it. Okay, so I have ended up stringing about 33 4 millimeter round pearls and a 4 millimeter round metal bead onto my... Um, the side that I'm finishing. So what it's going to end up to be is about a 28 inch necklace because I want this part to loop down like in the middle of my chest, maybe a little lower than the middle of my chest. Um, right around the middle of my chest. So I measured it, I held it up to the back of my neck where this would clasp, gave it about an inch to see where this would hang, held this part up so that I could see exactly where I want it to hang and that's how I'm judging the length I've got. And then I measured it on the beadboard and it will end up to be about a 28 inch necklace. So that kind of gives you a guideline. Now this is all your own design. Do it any way you want. Use any beads you want. All I'm showing you is a technique. So I'm not giving you exact numbers and, or anything else. Just because in stringing you can just kind of go with the flow and do as you please with it. You don't have to have an exact pattern. Just a technique. Now I'm going to put one of my um, four millimeter round beads on here. And I'm going to use a two 
a size 2 crimp bead. See if I can actually get that to crimp around my doubled wires here. And I think I can because I did it before on one of the last necklaces I made. So it should be able to. I'm going to pick up my clasp. Actually put the, um, the tube, the crimp tube on first. And this is a really wide bead so it might fall down. So what I think I will do is I'll put an 11 0 seed bead on top of that four millimeter round just so that my crimp bead doesn't fall down inside my wide hold four millimeter round. And let's see if an 11 0 will fit bo over both of these. It may not, I ha may have to get an 8 0 out, but no, I can drop an 11 0 down. So I'm just modifying it to shrink it down a little bit. Let me get you close so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So I've just dropped a little 11 0 seed bead over that 4 millimeter round so that my crimp bead doesn't fall down inside it when I put it on. So now I'm going to slide my crimp bead on. <clears throat> and this makes a really nice finish when you do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and slide this through my clasping and then I'm going to slide back through my jump ring. Now with this 11 0 seed bead on here, I doubt seriously I'm going to be able to go back through it with both of my um, wires. So I'm just going to have to come through the crimp bead itself. Make sure I've got nice, good tension, not so tight that it won't move, but nice tension. This type of beading wire that I'm using is flexible, so um, you can have it a little tighter than a be uh, beading wire that doesn't flex at all. Now I am going to go ahead and crimp this off just like I've been showing you all along in this video in the second divot, the one closest to the handles. And then I'm going to turn it sideways and crimp it again, squeezing the two folds together until I have a really nice tight crimp like this. And then I am just going to cut off, get your end cutters and get as close as you can, your flush cutters, whatever you want to call them, and cut those off. Now the problem always is when you have a little tiny wire sticking out like that, that it, it can scratch the neck. Sometimes you can get it inside that first bead, but most of the time, if you don't cut it past that first bead, it just sticks out. There's nothing you can do about it except for try to get it cut even closer because it will scratch your neck. And that's why I don't like um, not going through the first bead. This little end piece will just drive you nuts. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get a crimp cover and put it over this so that it does not scratch my neck or whoever's wearing it neck because these necklaces that I make like this usually I end up selling them. People seem to like them and um, I'm going to go ahead and do that because I know what will happen. Someone will buy it and bring it back to me and say it hurts me. So I will find a crimp cover. But first of all, I'm going to go ahead and put together this side. I will come back and show you how to put my crimp covers on and then we will be okay, finished. Okay, so I finished both sides and I will go ahead and show you the entire piece right after I put on my crimp bead cover. If I can get this to straighten out. Okay, so I've got a crimp, a crimp bead cover. It just looks like a little roly-poly and I'm just going to slide it over. I've got mighty crimpers in my hand. That's what these are called, and they work really well to use with this crimp bead cover. I'm going to slide it right over my cover, and then I'm going to squeeze. Then I'm going to turn it and squeeze it again. Until I get this to close round the crimp bead. And it's also covered that little piece of extra wire that I had sticking out because I've used a little bit bigger crimp bead cover than my actual crimp. You can get them in different sizes and I have several sizes and I just picked out a medium type size here. Um, you'll have to look online and see what different sizes they have and what I recommend is just buy a variety pack and then you can use 
whatever size looks appropriate for the particular project you're doing. I'm going to go ahead and put my crimp cover on this one and come back and show okay, you the so project. Okay, so I put the other crimp bead cover on and I just wanted to say you do not have to have a mighty crimper to do this. You can, I'm trying to get the television to stop <laughs> so you don't have to listen to that. You can go ahead and use just your regular flat nose or chain nose pliers to close those also. But you can see how that's ended that pretty nicely. And this is what the necklace looks like. Turned out really nice, really pretty. And you can make this portion as full as you'd like. You could make it with a bunch of seed beads, make it really full. You could make it with bigger beads and you can, you can do it any way you want. You can use bigger cones and have just a more bold look. I just used some little tiny beads on this because I thought it would look really pretty with the little tiny rondelles. And I think it did turn out really nice. So, and it hangs really nicely on the neck it hangs right where I wanted it to. It's really pretty nice. Let me back off just a little bit more and let me clean up my my bead mat and I'll show you all three projects and um, then we'll say goodbye. And here are the three projects that we've made. And I hope you like them and I hope you try it. And like I said, don't worry about having exactly the same thing I had. Just use what you've got and use the same techniques and come up with something really pretty. See you later. Bye-bye.